Sorry, just a minute. I'm updating the uh, meeting agenda. Okay, so the primary meet reason we're meeting today is because this is the uh, this is the last meeting before the end of uh, Google Summer Code. So hopefully, uh, Yash will show up. It looked like there was some chatter in Slack too, so I was kind of expecting some other people to show up as well. Uh, are we generally are we generally just a little bit late to this meeting? Uh, maybe it's probably just because it's off cadence and it's a little earlier than usual. So hopefully people got that message, but maybe they didn't. Okay. Okay. I see also for some reason it didn't show up on the list in the Chaos General channel as a meeting that's happening today. And I don't know why that is. That's weird. Interesting. So I will look into that. Well, I suppose. Uh, I will just get started real quick with a and show everyone what the uh, the home page looks like currently and let you know where we're at on that. Here, let me share my page. Okay, hopefully you can all see that. Yeah, it looks awesome. Okay, so the uh, the slider currently, so this isn't actually what the slider is going to look like when it's done. So the the current slider plugin that we have doesn't have some of the uh, the features and functionality that we uh, that we need. Uh, so I'm waiting on John's traveling right now. I need him to uh, purchase a. A new plugin for us. We're actually gonna we're switching to uh, Meta Slider. Uh, so once we have Meta Slider, we, we'll be able to we can do some HTML overlays over the top of the slider. So we can change the uh, we can change the way this text looks on top of the image, and we'll have different some. Uh, we can mess around with the placement. We can uh, basically just do a bunch of stuff we can't do with our current slider. Uh, and we could also kind of do some different things with the buttons and even image overlays over the top of this if we'd like. Uh, and then the, the other thing about that is that we will be able to have a uh, uh, text-based navigation on the slider. So rather than these dots, we kind of have some some there'll be a bar at the bottom here that'll allow us to kind of have some precognition about what the slides are. I can show you what that's going to look like just a little bit. Oh, 
Oops. Why did that? Okay. So that'll look kind of like this, and then the uh, the precognition. This the slider names down here will actually match the text here. So it'll be new contributors, uh, chaos community, and community health metrics along the bottom. Okay, and then the, so this, the what is chaos section, I think we got the formatting down on that. Uh, and then we jump down to the news and social, and we've messed with the formatting on this too. This is starting to look, I think, like what it's going to look like. Uh, and then I had sent a message in the uh, uh, Slack the other day asking about some branding uh, branding guidelines about using logos together. I don't know if anyone saw that or if anyone answered it yet, but, but the, this section over here, we'd like to add some kind of logo art to it. So we'll have our podcast here. Uh, Twitter and YouTube. Uh, basically, these three sections will connect out to the to that that content, which is off site. And then the uh, so the uh, the message that I sent out the other day uh, was about using logos together. So to to kind of to kind of give some add some imagery to this. Uh, we were thinking about doing something along the lines of this. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you, can you see that? No. I can't anyway. I don't know if others can, but I can't. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, okay. still, you're still on the um, page. Okay, here, let me switch my, I think that my sharing style is, uh, there we go, we'll do this. Not really. Okay, I assume you can see that. Yep. Okay, so something along the lines of that is kind of what I was thinking, although I'm, I'm open to other uh, other options. So let's think about kind of using them as the headers to replace this, or alternately, we could use them as some sort of combination button to, to visit the, uh, the site. Or maybe not, maybe it's just, maybe that's too complex. This may be a question for the LF. I don't know how much flexibility we have with regard to our brand, if that's something that we can just decide or if we have to get permission since they um, kind of are very involved in the branding. So I'm not sure actually, Kevin, I, and that's why I didn't answer because yeah. I really don't know. And I went to I went to Chaos Twitter, or, or the, I'm sorry, not Chaos Twitter. I went to Twitter and actually read their branding manual and I same for YouTube because uh, they because they have specific ways that their logos can be used as well uh, and logos the they just it, it's not dealt with at all so my, my guess is since it's not dealt with at all it's probably okay uh, but at the same time it's not something you see very often either uh, ultimately, this is just two logos next to each other, or two icons yeah, next to each other. Uh, yeah. So we're not modifying either logo. We're just really putting them together. And maybe there's a little bit of a like if if I if we merge it together so that it's a one button, maybe that's an issue. 
Uh, but if we leave it together and just make the Twitter icon a button, maybe it's not. Uh, although maybe maybe merging it together in a button isn't an issue. If, it, if we do it like this, maybe it's not an issue. If we put a boundary around it that turns it into a button, they might have issue with that. Do you kind of understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Uh, if we use it as a header, it may not be an issue. Uh, if we use it as a button, it may. Who knows? There's, my guess is that there's some just some little weird, like weird use cases where if we were to do it one way, they would say, no, we don't like that. If we do it another way. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, no, uh, I think someone had responded to, Kinsey had responded to the question on Slack, uh, um, which echoing what uh, Kinsey said was using using one, like using Twitter, obviously like it will show that it's chaos Twitter and we do not necessarily need to add like chaos, like the chaos uh, logo to it. And then for the podcast icon, we could have like an icon that indicates maybe around with the colors, um, something along the lines with what you've done that just indicates the podcast. But the yeah. other um, Twitter and YouTube, we could just have the Twitter and YouTube icon there. It already indicates that, yeah, it should be for chaos. Okay, so yeah, so that's an option too. So I could leave these headers the way they are currently. And then I could just pull those logos, right? So that's, I could just pull that icon down here, right? Yep. Is what, uh, uh, and I think the, the main reason that I had done this to begin with was because we have two Twitter accounts. Uh, and I wanted to be able to differentiate between the uh, Chaos Africa Twitter account and the regular, or not the weather, well, the, the 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 chaos community Twitter account. Uh, so yeah, I was going to do a sense. chaos, yeah. So that so that was the reason I did this initially. And maybe when I and maybe when I went down that, maybe I kind of went down the rabbit hole with it, and maybe I'm making it more complex than it needs to be. <laughs> yeah, I think the link will just anyone that wants to navigate there, the correct link. As, I think as long as the correct link is there, it's going to navigate to the right place. So maybe we don't have to like really bother about that. Okay. I mean, so after having this conversation, I am inclined to not do, just not do this. Uh, and to maybe leave this the way it is, but we'll add the We'll add the icons down here. And I do like the idea of using, uh, having these icons have some color rather than, like when we go to the bottom of the page, we have, we do have other social icons here. Uh, and those don't need to have color, but these up here, I would like them to have color. Okay, uh, and then uh, we've resized the uh, the images here. Uh, the the Sloan is a little bit bigger than sustain. That's kind of on purpose. Uh, I am contemplating making these smaller still, though. Uh, so any feedback on that would be helpful. Otherwise, this uh, uh, we'll finalize the slider once we get the new plugin. Otherwise, the home page is. This prototype for the home page is pretty much what we're gonna end up with, I think. So any any general feedback would be nice or or specific feedback. Yeah, I think I do have one on like the text over the the slider. I don't know if we could have um the texts no like the lines not obstruct the text. I don't know. If we could do a custom one like that. Yeah, so with the with the current slider we have, we don't have the ability to uh 
to do that. That's why we're that's why we're getting a new slider. So don't uh, uh, the way the image appears over the text now is not the way it's going to appear when we uh, when we finalize the the website. We're going to uh, okay. Uh, we'll have a. a I don't know why I keep sound doing that. That's weird. Uh, we're going to try a couple different ways of making that text pop out over the uh, over the image. Uh, whether that means adding kind of a, a background behind the uh, text or making the font bigger or a different color. Uh, so we'll we'll try kind of a couple different methods of making that text pop out. Uh, maybe the image has an overlay over it entirely that uh, kind of adds some texture to the image that uh, that would differentiate the, uh, the text. Uh, but there, there, there are tricks to doing that uh, that we cannot do currently with our current plugin. Uh, okay. So, but with the, uh, with the meta slider, we will be able to do that. So remember that's, and that's this here, right? So it'll have, it'll have the, the navigation on the bottom and then the text will be in a different place and larger and uh, may have some, it may have a little bit of background to help it pop out. So, and then the, the buttons will probably be, the buttons will be different as well on the slider. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Okay, and Yash is here, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, turn it over to Yash, since uh, this is the last meeting for Google Summer of Code. Uh, Yash, if you need me to navigate to a page, I'm happy to. Uh, uh, yeah, if we could just navigate to the metrics and models page. So I just put down the link in the chat box. Is that KB? KB topic, uh, metrics and models. Okay. There? Okay. So I just finished adding in the latest metrics. Uh, the risk working group was the only one that was left. And now we have 11 topic areas in total. And all the metrics are added. I think one or two metric models are left uh, that I'll be adding soon. Other than that, I feel that uh, if we could just go to the community knowledge base, so I have a short okay. update on that as well. Uh, so were you... Uh, did you just add risk or did you go through and double check the other metrics? I just added risk, but I'll be double checking uh, once okay. I finish adding everything. Because uh, I can, I, I do know that uh, uh, all of, uh, a lot of the, the metrics were edited in addition to risk. So we went through the, uh, we went through the entire list. Uh, mm -hmm. and a, lot, a lot of the metrics now have multiple okay. context areas and the, uh, uh, project doesn't exist anymore. Uh -huh. uh, everything that was project was turned into platform. Oh. Uh, so okay. and uh, so additionally, at yeah, the yeah, a lot, of, a, a lot of the metrics will have two to three content areas now. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, so the yeah, uh, just, and uh, I should let you know. Uh, them again. Okay, and I should let you know. Uh, I think. Uh, Melema is on the line, uh, and she is she is taking a look at the uh, the design on these pages. So I think it looks pretty good, uh, but we'll uh, we'll see if if, if uh, after she has a chance to look at it, we'll see what she recommends doing. But, yeah, sure. Okay, okay. Uh, and then when we obviously when we are we going to have are we going to have the the text in here as well for all of these. I think we could have that okay. if it's not too big a line. Yeah, it probably needs to be limited to one sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we could just add it in the subtopic uh, description area. Okay. Uh, and then when we, click on we, when we click on these, we do get a. Yeah. Yes. You click on. Okay. Uh, just. Click on organization and you'll just find the description there. Uh -huh. so I just put in a placeholder text there. Ah, 
Oh, awesome. Yeah. So just below the topics organization, you see that we have some uh, that one line description of mm -hmm. the topic area. So currently we have the comments turned on. Yeah, I just added in. Uh, I was thinking that this feature could be utilized when the metrics go out for review. Like when we have the 30 day review period or we could just leave it on always. I don't know. Oh, but I really like this feature. That's, that's an interesting idea. Uh, so during the review period, we turn it on. And then uh, when the review period is over, we turn it off. Mm -hmm. huh. It might be nice to leave it on if people have questions about the metric, they could drop them here or if they're using them, they could, you know, drop any really any any pertinent information about the metric might be um, good to encourage a little more engagement on them. Yeah, yeah, I would uh, maybe change this, we could change this headline to something else. Rather than leave a reply, we could change it to uh, uh, Either something that either something that specifically says, you know, questions yeah, about maybe the metric drop or uh, like or comments about the metric. Yeah. Uh, provide some guidance on what kind of what we would like them to <laughs> submit. <laughs> also, um, Yash, where would that notification go? Because my fear is that we'll get maybe some spammers or just random people that are dropping comments in and no one ever responds because we don't know about that. Do you know where those notifications would go or like how we would um, manage those comments? I'm audible. What's that? Yeah. No, uh, you're not. Am I audible? I think he's breaking up. Yeah, sure, you still there? I don't have an answer to that as well. Uh, there's either going to be, uh, I can guess that there's either going to be a, uh, a place in WordPress where we can capture that or look at it, or alternately, we may be able to point it towards an email address, is my guess. Oops. Uh, We'll yeah, I think to the... that each metric is actually uh, each com. Yeah, if you will just see the chat box. Uh, I just dropped in my thoughts, and I think that uh, every time you drop a comment, uh, the to the metric, and you can sort of see. Yeah, you're still breaking up, Yash. Interesting. Oh. OK. 
Okay, so it's it's a full comment board. It's not a or it's a full message board. It's not a, it's not just a form that's collecting the messages. Uh, and then why do you keep doing that? Yeah. So it looks like it's popping up here. So it's sorting it by pages in the uh, in the knowledge base. So we have seven we have seven pages of these. Uh, um, then we can also track the views and then guesses and knows. Uh, I'm not sure I like the idea of having a, a full message board on each page, uh, just for the uh, because those can get spammy. Uh, it would be it would be possible to add a form to the bottom of the page that would uh, send the comment to us in a different way, or capture the comment in a different way. So that might be something to think about in the future. Um, but I would be kind of inclined to if it's if this is just a regular message board, I would be inclined to kind of turn that feature off. I don't know. I don't know what other people are thinking. My house is get. No, I've not had any issue with anything. What would have been complaining? I've not had one issue with anything. Does anyone have any thoughts on that? Yeah, maybe when we get discourse up and running, we can somehow embed or link or something and have just point people over there because that is the other the only other issue with leaving these comments open is it's like one more place for people to engage and so that's yeah. good but also it kind of makes it more difficult to it adds have, you know, conversations yeah. yeah it adds complexity every time we add every time we add another channel or another place where discussion happens it adds complexity right so the and one of the one of the reasons for the website design is to remove some of that redesign is to remove some of that complexity, right? So this we kind of want to have we have want to have one place where these conversations occur or where the uh, the information occurs. Uh, yeah, agreed. Uh, and we, by the way, we will we should be able to. Uh, when discourse is up and running, we should be able to integrate that with the website. So discourse can be built can be built into uh, the WordPress site pretty easily. Okay, so I think that maybe choosing discourse would be a better option because I think it's hard to track comments if we have them in this way. Yeah, and it's and it's a message board as well. So, yeah, but to managing the spam myself on this would be unpleasant. Right. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming there's just a switch in here somewhere to turn that off. Yeah, it's in the settings section. Okay. okay. Yeah, I'll just do that. Uh, where do you want me to go next? Oh, yeah. The community chaos community knowledge base uh, in that uh, since in the last meet uh, Ruth said that the structure was almost finalized so I went ahead and uh, subcategorized everything in that knowledge base okay and we now have around 40 to 45 articles that are waiting to be filled with content okay oh so we just haven't pulled the articles in yeah, we have pulled the article. It's just oh. that they don't have any content as of yet. Oh, they're empty in the in the GitHub repo. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this so this is basically what when we land on the chaos community knowledge base, these are the topic areas that we will land on. Mm -hmm. So 
So local chapters, community resources about chaos, how work is done, governance. Click on governance, board of directors, path to leadership, roles and responsibilities, chaos code of conduct, data policies, project charter, Slack. Uh, we'll also we'll put the calendar down here. In this section here, we'll have the working groups. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking this section here will be kind of similar to what's on the participate page now for the working groups. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that which, can be done. Which is, you know, basically this. Yep. So, and once again, Bellamo is going to look at the, uh, kind of look at the design on that. So she has some ideas on how to, on what these modules would look like. Uh, that would be great. I know in a couple of the other designs, we we have actually kind of chosen to go with some some different colors uh, for modules like this. Uh, so so perhaps they uh, perhaps that's something we do here as well. So but I'll I will let her uh, take a look at that before she doesn't need to comment on it now unless she wants to. Okay. Is there so if you were to land on this page, does this give you the information that you need? Ruth, yes. Sorry. I'm not sure how long you've had your hand up, huh? No, just now. Yeah, so all done on the on the work. This looks good. Um so one thing I want to say was if you could rearrange the um like about chaos coming first and then how work is done. I think um I'll I'll send the link to the better the better arrangement because I think GitHub doesn't allow you to arrange. It just does it like alphabetically, automatically. So that's why it's like that on the main repo. Mm -hmm. So probably I send you like the arrangement so you put in switch it because like I I think the first like arranging it's in a better order. That's a good comment. Uh, Yash, I'm, I'm assuming we have the ability to change the order of these. Yes, okay. uh, I'm just confirming it, but as far as I know, we do have the ability to do that. Okay. Uh, so do you want, do you... Uh... Yeah, if there's a specific topic order, uh, you can just put it down in the Slack or in the chat box and I'll just rearrange that. Do you need a moment to, to put the order together here or is this something you want to look at later? Ruth? Yeah, this is, I'm sending the link to Yash now, like the link where the order is like properly, the last comment on this issue. Ah, okay. So, yeah, okay. The, cool. the last comment that the order is um, it's in the about chaos, how work is done in chaos, um, our local chapters, how to contribute uh, to and chaos media and outreach governance, then community resources. Yep, I got it. Okay. You want me to go to the you want me to go to the next page now? Yeah, the next page was the getting started. I don't think there's been a, a major update to that. Okay. Is it this page that will pull from the quick start for newcomers? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I so. think uh, we were sort of debating uh, where we should have this content. I think the quick start should be with the uh, getting started page, but yeah. the community guidelines, we were kind of oh, in a dilemma where yeah. should the community guidelines go. If at all, they are required to be presented on the first page. Yeah, I think the, the community guidelines, I think we're going to send someplace else. I think Matt suggested that we would have a spreadsheet linking each, you know, each chunk of work that Chaos does to a contact person. Yeah, there was, there's a, uh, uh, and I'm sure Elizabeth uh, probably has a better idea of what that is, but there, I think Elizabeth and Matt are building a spreadsheet that has a, basically a content person or a contact person for each kind of area of chaos. Mm -hmm. uh, so the yeah the that point of the 
this section would ha would have that some version of that spreadsheet in it where it's basically a point of contact for uh, if you want to uh, I think if you, if you want to work on like the common working group as a point of contact for for that right is that correct Elizabeth yeah and it doesn't have to be in a spreadsheet format if there's an easier way to embed that information like it could be a markdown table in github like it could be other another way we could put that information um, in another place so yeah yeah it should, it should probably be a markdown uh markdown table and it should probably and it should probably live in the it should live in the community handbook folder right yeah um and Ruth has also been working on that spreadsheet. So I'm going to also kind of rely on Ruth's best judgment of where to put that in the community handbook and the best way to get that in there too. Uh, so. we, we, I, uh, I kind of like talked about putting it in the quick start um, for newcomers as well. And it can also be on this page because um, mm -hmm. I think this page also has like, um, this page will also lead into how people will get into chaos. So. Mm -hmm. I think it should be on this page too. Yes, yeah, so I, I would recommend having it as a separate document from the quick start guide. Hmm. Uh, like, is it like replicating the information on the spreadsheet? Because initially what we what we planned was having it link back to like a view, view only link to the spreadsheets. So will it be having a page like replicating that information? I'm sorry. I I don't I don't understand the question. The initial plan for the spreadsheet was just having that um having a link um to the spreadsheet like a view only link. So um is your thoughts on having like a separate page for that same information instead of navigating to that spreadsheet? So on the, so on the website we would have that that table would be right below it. So from okay. a web from a website perspective, we're going to display it. It'll end up kind of displaying as a single page. From a from a community handbook perspective in in GitHub, I guess my my recommendation would be to have those two those as two separate documents. Uh, and then I mean. Uh, If you had a link in that document, it would. Uh, so keep in mind, any links that you have in these documents are actually going to take you to GitHub, right? Or the, 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 these links will all take you off website. Yeah. So which okay. is fine. I think we can do that. We can do like, and you can also have that information on the quick start guide itself. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think I think that that spreadsheet just has like a list of working groups and the different contact people. So mm -hmm. okay. So uh, Yash, do you have any other any other updates? Or so this is the last week of Google Summer Code. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, there were a couple of other things I wanted to discuss. Okay. Uh, I feel like uh, Elizabeth mentioned this earlier that uh, sometimes updating the knowledge base can be a bit tricky because we have some pages in a different section and some as articles and some as topics. So I was just thinking that this week I could focus on creating some documentation as to how you can update the knowledge base. And other than that, uh, I think GSOC requires us to submit a project report. So uh, I was just thinking on focusing on those two things for the week. Okay. Uh, are there any are there anything anything in the that we're actually going to be any any finish up in here that we're going to do? Uh, the models are left, and if you have any uh, you know icons. Or if you have any font or color recommendations, I think Belema would be recommending that. So we can just brush up on that. Okay. Other than is, that, 
Are, is the are we going to be in 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 some sort of a finished state for the uh, for the knowledge base by the end of the week? I mean, uh, like the only point left is the content. So I could sort of incorporate the content, and you could go on updating it as per your requirements. You know, if you have uh, you know sort of a rough look of how the knowledge base looks. And then you can sort of go ahead and polish that up. So maybe just update. You mean the, the contents in here, or? No, I don't think we'll be updating these topic areas. We have already added all the eleven ones. The project is left, right? Uh, the project has been dissolved. I'm sorry. The project topic area has been dissolved, right? So I'll just update these metrics. Okay. Yeah, you don't need to worry about these content areas here as part of Google Sum of Code. Okay. Uh, I think uh, Bellema and I can take care of those uh, for the kind of wrapping up the uh, the this part of the website redesign. Right. So, so, so I would uh, the... on on my end, I would I guess I would I would I would like the the topic areas to be kind of in in somewhat of a finished state. I know that. Uh, uh, there are still going to be kind of updates and things needed, and and you can't do everything on them. Uh, but for example, that like this text in here, I would hope that we could get this text in, and maybe yeah. update the content areas for uh, the metrics and models. Yep. And then for the for the getting started and the uh, the community one, uh, I, I do realize that we're we're probably because the some of that content doesn't exist yet. We're probably, we probably won't be able to get that one to the to a finished state. Mm -hmm. Kevin, are you thinking we can just put in the one sentence description of the context tags in that document? In the from the document, yeah, the the, yeah, the that context tags the document. Yeah, and yeah. I, really, I think Yash has that. Okay. Um, you do have that document, right? The yeah, the page that just has the the one sentence definition of what these are. Oh yes, I think I have that. Okay. If if you, I'm pretty sure I sent it to you, but if you lost the link or have trouble finding it, let me know and I'll I'll resend it. Sure. Okay. Yep, I have the link. Okay, well that sounds good then. Yeah, the some uh, so documentation and then just kind of finishing up the uh, the metrics models page mostly, right? And maybe maybe a little bit of work on the other the other knowledge bases, uh, and then your uh, uh, the document that you need to submit for for Google Summer Code. That's the plan for the week. Yep. Okay. Exactly. That sounds good. Uh, does anyone else? Uh, meeting's almost over. So, does anyone else need to need to talk about anything before we go? Um, uh, Calvin, um, the timeline we did. I don't know if they could actually check it out. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh. Oh, you know what? I let's go to Figma. Okay. And yeah. For some reason, that doesn't. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, Bellama made this really nice timeline, and then I went in and messed it all up. So, there we go. Everyone see that? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, it really looks good. I think you dropped in the general channel too. 
Uh, yes, yeah. So there is a, if you want to see an image of it and you can comment on it in Slack general channel as well, or uh, I'm sorry, the web content, the web content channel is where I dropped it. You know, I think you dropped it in general channel. Oh, did I? Yeah. Oh yeah, I did. Oops. I meant to drop it in the... Well, yeah, it looks it looks good. Um, and yeah, I think it is where Hadi comment about putting a uh, chaotic name. <laughs> yeah, we can add that. It was just the gap between October twenty one and September twenty two. Mm -hmm. it, it seemed a little large to me, based on like the previous ones. We you know like every few months we had a milestone. So that was my only suggestion is to maybe add something in there. If that's milestone worthy, I don't know, but there might be something else. I don't know. Yeah, it does. You can you can kind of see the maturity of the project as it goes, right? So as we as we as we move on, like in the first two years, we have a bunch of firsts, uh, and then when we when we get into the uh, I'm sorry, in the first four years, we have a bunch of firsts, and then when we get into the uh, uh, the fifth year or the the fifth and sixth year. We've been around this in that long. Uh, yeah, not as many firsts here, right? Uh, yeah, and I think um, the the dates for the Chaos Africa and I don't know about Chaos Asia Pacific, but I think the date, the particular month is June um, for Chaos Africa. So. Oh, it's it's June twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was I was wondering if we could separate those as well, if they were the same date or the same month, or if they were yeah, different for months. Pacific, I think it's been quite a. I don't know. I think Joya is on this call. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe Joya will confirm. So, because we've had a we've had an Asia Pacific call for a while, uh, and yeah. then the uh, the first Chaos Shanghai China meetup was over here. But I don't know if like recognizing Asia Pacific and Africa as kind of communities within chaos, I don't know if that was officially done until recently or or if there is even kind of a, an official recognition of it. So we could yeah, separate think, those out. Yeah, I think we had we have that official recognition just uh, just recently, like okay. almost along with the recognize uh, the recognition with chaos africa so i think we can yeah just be together okay When was the, what was Chaotix? When was that? It was in February, um, Elizabeth Wright. <laughs> yeah, February. Okay, I'm gonna add that in later. But, and I am, I'm kind of okay having leaving some space here. Yeah, I think it looks good. Uh, so I know there's two spots there, but you know, the, the year isn't over. And the, the, the general pattern is each line is two years. So so this line would, would end at December in December. So we still have some time to add a few key things. To do stuff. Yeah, to do stuff. And we can <laughs> we can go back and we could go back and look at so I I've got a chaos timeline. What's I don't know what's in 2022. Uh, yeah. Yeah, not a whole lot apparently. Uh, so I mean we have been we have been going through the metrics and uh, uh
the metrics review. We could maybe add the metrics review because that's kind of a big deal. So. Any other comments on this or things we want to add? Okay, if not, then uh, Bellama, I would say we could probably, so I did, I did mess up the spacing on this, I apologize. So it's kind of, it's, it's kind of subtle, but like, you can kind of see that there's a kind of bigger space here. These are not all equally spaced. I don't, uh, I don't know if you want to fix that or not, but uh, uh, if that's something you want to fix, I suppose we could probably wrap this up as it is. Maybe, maybe uh, I think I would like to fix it up. What's that? I think I would like to fix it up. Okay. So it's better. Uh, what is, so what's the text for around chaotix? What do we want to write there? The community chooses chaotix as their identifier or something like that. I don't know. As the name for the community or something, community members. Contributors, maybe? Sure. Or? I think yeah. members. Members is a better word. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, yeah. Okay. So to that, I, I yeah, I would turn it back over to Bellama. Uh, if you can, if you want to finalize this and send me the image, then I will go ahead and uh, start constructing the. Uh, this is the about page, by the way. Okay, uh, and with that, we've gone along once again. I apologize. Uh, yeah, no worries. Uh, please reach out to me if you have any comments. And I'm sorry I just interrupted you.